Hi everyone, I'm Lauren and welcome to my floss tube channel, Stitching in the Stacks. In these videos, I share my cross stitching with you and I also talk a little bit about books. I'm an elementary librarian, so I can't resist talking about kids' books, but it's mostly cross stitching, I promise. This is my second floss tube video. Thank you so much who watched my first video and liked, commented, subscribed. I really enjoyed reading all the comments. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I'm planning on making these videos monthly. That way I have a bunch of floss or er, cross stitch to show you. Um, what have I been up to this past month? School. School, school, school. Um, our school is doing a hybrid model, so half of the students come on Monday, Tuesday, the other half come on Thursday, Friday, and we clean down the schools and everyone works from home on Wednesday. Um, we also have a bunch of students who have chosen just to do virtual online school as well. So I have been just crazy busy getting devices out to all the students so they can get started with that, just getting all my lessons started and um, starting to provide books, everything's just, it's a lot of logistics with all the different things going on. Um, I've also been doing a little bit of wedding planning, so I'm engaged and we're going to be getting married next year in October. Um, so recently I asked my bridesmaids um, to be bridesmaids and they all said yes, so I'm really excited. I'll show you here um, what I asked them with. I got them these beautiful necklaces and I made them these really nice cards. So I'm so excited that they're gonna be a part of my day. We already have our venue taken care of. It's really pretty. It's about 45 minutes north of our home. And um, it's a bar, restaurant, banquet hall on a lake. So we're gonna get married outside by the lake. And then everything's right there. So that'll be really nice. I can't wait. And this weekend, we're planning on doing our engagement photos up north. Um, I'm hoping it's really pretty color-wise with the fall leaves. Um, and then we're going to be doing it at our cabin. So it's on a lake too. So I want to get some pictures on the lake as well. So looking forward to that. And it'll be nice to have some nice pictures of us. So yeah, that's what I've been up to. School's been taking a lot, a lot of my time. Um, I haven't been doing as much cross stitch as I usually do just because of school. And I've also been having some issues with um, joint pain, which has kind of slowed me down as well. So let's get started with cross stitch. So finishes. So I only have one finished and I actually gave it away already. So I'm going to have to just insert the picture here for you and um, this is a family portrait that I did for um, one of my co-workers her baby has been due any day now um, and so we're all very eager to get to meet the new baby and see pictures and I really hope everything goes well with them and I want to give them something special and something crafty she's an art teacher so I always try to be kind of creative so I designed my own pattern I used um, uh, graph paper to just kind of sketch it out and then I went ahead and stitched it and um, this is the first pattern that I used sulky threads on so I got a whole bunch of sulkies and I chose to use those for it and um, so here's some of the sulkies here these are some of the colors I used so this is just like a nice tan neutral color and then some of them are um, variegated. So this one made a good denim like color. And it was kind of tricky to figure out what kind of fabric I wanted to use. I used a bunch of different ones and I ended up landing on an 18 count fabric. I also tried like a 28 count linen, but um, it was just, it wasn't the coverage you wanted because the selkie is about one and a half DMC. So it's not quite as much as like two strands would be, but it's definitely more than one. So I found it looked really good on an 18 count. Um, I just had to pull it out from the other things. And so yeah, I'm happy with it, how it turned out. And she wrote me a really nice thank you note that her and her husband loved it. So 
I just can't wait to meet the baby. So hopefully we'll have good news soon about that. So next we have whips. I actually only have four whips that I worked on this month. Usually I have more, but um, with my joints hurting, it's just kind of slowed me down and school's been so busy. So four whips, but I'm still happy. I did make some stitching progress, so that's okay. So the first one is Napoleon, and this is what it'll look like when I'm done with him. So it's Napoleon crossing the Alps on his horse, Marengo. And here is how far I am so far. And what I did is I did some of the um, bottom where his back two legs are. I did, I worked on a lot of that and the very bottom border part too. So I didn't get as much done as I wanted. I usually try to have about a page finish each month. So I want to keep working on that um, for the next week or so until I get a page finish. I'm pretty close, so hopefully it won't be too long. So that's Napoleon. Next, um, the next whip is I did get a little bit more done on my temperature tree. I'm trying to catch up. You're supposed to stitch just every day a little bit, a leaf each day. But I haven't been doing that. But I still, it does still show the temperature for each day is, shows on which color leaf. And I know I have all the colors I'm supposed to be using, but I'm not sure where they're at. So I might either have to buy another one or really search and find the colors that I'm missing. So that's why not all of it is done. And um, that pattern you can find on Etsy by Stitching Mama. The next one I'm doing, I love this pattern. It's Autumn Blessing by Waxy Moon Designs. And it says, may your blessings be as countless as the autumn leaves. And I love fall. Fall is my very favorite and I love leaves. So this pattern is just, oh, amazing. I love it. So I have some of the words done. As countless says, the autumn leaves, and I have a little bit above that too. And then I have some of the leaves done. Um, and I'm using some of the called for colors, and some of them I've made substitutions. If you want to know exactly what colors I've used, um, let me know and I'll find that for you. Um, but I'm using a lot of classic color works for the most part, so I love the variegation slightly in the leaves. And especially in the words. I was really nervous how the words would turn up on this fabric because um, it seemed like a very light color compared to the other colors in the pattern. But I, I actually love it and it does stand out. So I didn't need to be worried about that. And my last whip I did is Little Quaker Halloween by Susan Achy, I think it is. Achy. Ach. A-C-H-E. And, um, this is how far I got. So, I got a lot done. Since I didn't, this is a new start. This one I didn't have started before. I normally am a big fall person. I'm not normally a Halloween person. I normally just decorate for the seasons, not necessarily the holidays. But this pattern is just so, so stinking cute. Um, and I'm going to flash it for you because it is a free pattern. So it's on the Aurifil website as a, one of their free patterns. So um, I didn't use Aurifil though, I used DMC. But um, it's just so cute and I really love it. And I'm definitely going to be finishing that up and stitching it for Halloween next month. So... Those are all my whips. Okay, so I do have some stitchy haul to show you. Um, the first is, I got this from Nerd Pelt. Um, and it was only just a few dollars. And it's a stitching gauge so that I can tell what count my fabric is. So I think that'll be really helpful. And yeah, it was a 
very affordable purchase. My next one, I ordered this a while ago and it came, so I'm very excited. Um, this is from Dot Dot Goose Design, and um, she did, she's out of Green Bay, so yay Wisconsin, and it's, what a gorgeous project bag. Like, um, I don't know if you can tell, but the fabric underneath this has like a shimmer sparkle to it. It's not really showing up on the camera, but it's even more gorgeous in person. Really pretty fabric on the back as well. Just love the little birds and pine cones. So pretty for fall or er, for winter coming up. And I love that with it, she sent me a packer schedule. We didn't have one yet, so thank you. Um, it's been great watching the game so far. So far, so good. Two wins of the season. So thank you. Um, dot dot goose designs that was from um, I did order some um, threads from needle case goodies um, I got a pattern I'll show later and just some country mocha Ada um, from finish a quilt I also got some threads and let's see what else did I get oh I couldn't resist I just had to get Stitching with the Housewives, Hello Fall, so that was the fox one. Just He's just so stinking cute, and like I told you, obsessed, love fall, so couldn't help myself. I had to get that one online as well, so I'll probably stitch him here pretty soon. Um, I also got um, a bunch of different magazines in. Um, I got the, I think the, yeah, the October version of Just Cross Stitch. Um, this had a lot of really cute fall and, um, Halloween patterns. And I'll show you some that I plan on doing later. Um, and then not long after, I also got the Christmas ornaments, special edition as well. Um, and here I really like the um, deer. There's a whole section of different deer, and I think I'm going to stitch quite a few of those this year. And then I also got Punch Needle and Primitive Stitcher magazine. I was so excited when I got this. The first one I saw was this one here from Priscilla and Chelsea. So cute with that little barn. But there's so many really adorable patterns. I like if you don't have a copy yet, highly, highly recommend it. Um, and Shakespeare's Peddler is the featured shop in this. And I love watching her, the kitten stitcher on Floss Tube as well to see all her stuff. So seriously, get that cop a copy of that if you can. And then today I also got some stitching mail. Um, I ordered from Pumpkin Creek Primitives some patterns. So I ordered the Scarlet House Christmas in the Village pattern. That's a really cute one. I also ordered Anne Feezy Folk Arts Pumpkin Patch. That one's so cute. I've seen a lot of people stitching this. Um, and then this pattern, everyone's been stitching. I've wanted it for a while. I started to notice it's becoming harder and harder to get. And that's Plum Street Samplers Cinnamon Stars. So now I have a copy so that when I'm ready, I can start working on that. And with it, um, Bobby, the owner of Pumpkin, Pre Pumpkin Creek Primitives, sent me a little bag of tea some cute little beads and a needle threader so that was just so sweet of her and I'll definitely be shopping there again it was the first time I had bought from them so I believe it's a pretty new shop it online it said it was open since 2020 and I also saw that she has a floss tube she's pretty new to floss tube as well so I'm gonna have to watch her after I finish recording this video um, so that's my haul 
So next I wanted to just give a shout out to some of the floss tubers that I've been watching lately. Um, the first one is one of my favorites, Janet Jabber. I love watching her videos. She's just so fun to see what she's been stitching. Um, and she commented on my first video. I kind of geeked out. That's when I'm like, oh my gosh, people like are watching my videos. Janet watched my videos. So sorry, I'm kind of fangirling here, Janet, but I love you. Um, I also have enjoyed watching Colorado Cross Stitcher. She's also new to um, floss tube and in her second video she shows us some stretches and exercises that you should do before and after stitching kind of so that you don't get stiff and stuff and I thought that was really helpful especially since I've been having issues with joint pain lately. Um, I also have been enjoying watching Noah Stitches. He's pretty new to the floss tube scene as well. So, they're, it's just so fun to be a part of this community and get to watch other people and interact with everyone. Um, and then I also have been watching Cynthia with Stitching in the Light. Um, and coming up this October, she is part of um, a Stitch Along fundraiser that um, is raising money for Freedom Shield which helps victims of human trafficking. And the stitch along is that um, you would, um, it's called the Great Pumpkin Sale and it is to stitch pumpkins in October. And then while they're raising money for Freedom Shield and they actually have um, different prizes and stuff and it's just gonna be really awesome. So in just a bit, I'll start showing you some. I'm, I already donated and um, I'm going to definitely be stitching pumpkins. Like I said, I love fall, love pumpkins. So I can't wait. And that's what I'm going to focus on primarily in October. So let me just grab that and I'll show you what I'm going to be fall stitching on then. So plans in the great pumpkin sale. I have probably about 20 different patterns I would love to stitch on for the Great Pumpkin Sale. Pumpkins, fall, love it. I'm less into Halloween, but there's a few Halloween patterns in there as well, but most of them are just general fall patterns. Though for Halloween, of course, I will keep working on my little Quaker Halloween. So that's the one I will do. And then the rest are going to be, I believe, all new starts. Um, and then this one I just recently got from Needlecase Goodies. It's Hands-On Designs Let's Talk Autumn. I'm really excited about this. And I've seen several people stitch this instead of on black, but like a nice like tan color and I think that's what I want to do because I'm not that crazy about the chalkboard look for this one. I think it would look really nice on like a dark mocha color. So I'm excited about that one. I mean how cute. It's It's got all things autumn. Just love it. Um, The next one is Pinker and Pumpkin Quilting's Crow Creek Salt Box. Um, and I don't have a picture of it finished. Um, I'll find one and insert it in here. Um, but this is a freebie pattern on their blog. And it's a new one just from this year. And I'm just really obsessed. It's a cute little house. And I just can't wait to stitch this one too. With pumpkins, of course. Um, the next one is from the current uh, issue of Punch Needle and Primitive Stitcher, and um, that one is, let me find the right page for you, is Crows in the Pumpkin Patch, which is by Teresa Miller. And I just, I like crows a lot too, and crows and ravens, so this pattern is just so perfect. That's another one for the Great Pumpkin Sale. Um, I happened upon another um, freebie, and this one's through Waxing Moon Designs. I don't have this one as a pattern either, but it's a cute little, it's called Autumn Blackbird, and it's a cute little bird on a pumpkin. I'll see if I can insert a picture of it finished. 
And then as I found these other freebies, I came across another one on La Comtesse and Le Pointe de Croix. Sorry, I am not French or Italian or whatever that is. So I'm not that familiar with what it's saying, but it's called the Pumpkin House. And it's just so cute and I can't wait to stitch that as well. Okay. Again, then just cross stitch. The October issue had so many stinking cute pumpkin related pumpkin patterns. First one, their red barn pump pocket has tiny little pumpkins on there and I just love this barn. It is so cute. It's so cute as a little pocket too. So I can't wait to stitch this one. There's no way I'm going to get these all stitched, guys, but we're going to try our best. The next one is Tiny Modernist Halloween Cuties. So, I think almost all of them except the house have pumpkins in them. I really think the little skeleton in which are so stinking cute. So, I might stitch some of these up. Um, The next one I actually have stitched before. But it was like the most enjoyable cross stitch product project I've ever done, and that's Plum Street Samplers Hello Fall. So I'm really, really thinking about stitching this again. I love it with the birds, pumpkins. The colors are just beautiful. So I think I want to stitch this again, and this time do it on linen. Next one is in Cross Stitch Crazies. What episode is this? Not episode. I don't even have to see a date on here. I don't know, it's from last year. And they have a set of different cats and I covered up the pattern so you can't see them, but this pattern. With this little cat sitting on a jack-o'-lantern, I think is so stinking cute. Not a big cat person, but my cat, my aunt has a cute little black cat, and this reminds me of him. So, love that pattern as well. Um, I also really like this pattern, Be Thankful, by Country Cottage Needleworks. Um. I'm trying to decide if I want to do the white pumpkins or if I would prefer more a traditional orange pumpkins or maybe a combination of both. Kind of torn on that. If you have an opinion, you can post it below. I'm really stuck with that. Sorry for the cut. My device tried telling me that it was out of space, but I fixed it now. So I'll show you more of our my cross stitch plans. So the next thing is called um, the Pumpkin Farm, and it's by the French Giraffe. Um, and I only have a really tiny picture of it, but it's a little barn with a little truck full of pumpkins. Um, and it's, I think there's a little dog there too. I think that'll be a really cute, fun stitch as well. Okay, and then I have three that I ordered that I haven't gotten yet. I think they'll be here in a day or two. Um... So the first one here is um, Pumpkin Pick and Truck by Homespun, Homespun Elegance. So cute. Look at that little crow there and the squirrel. Adorable. The next one is Bittersweet Trio by Waxy Moon Designs. Love all the pumpkins and little critters as well. And then this last one is called Harvest Home Pin Cushion by Manny D. Dona. And I think that's really gorgeous as well. So excited about all three of these. Um, here's another one that I bought as a PDF. And um, it's called Happy Fall. And um, this one is by Cherry Hill Stitchery. So... Super cute pattern there. Mm -hmm. Similar to that I have by Anna 
X stitch is Hello Ball. Cute little circle one with a nice pumpkin. Then, as I told you before, I just got Cinnamon Stars, and that does have pumpkins, so I could use that one as well. And the Annie Feezy Folk Art Pumpkin Patch. So cute with those funky pumpkins. So I can't wait. Pumpkins, pumpkins, pumpkins. Love them, love them, love them. Um, just, I can't wait to do all that stitching. That's what I'm going to focus on for October. Um, also coming up in October, um, every year, not every year, but our, my school last year when I started there, I started a pumpkin contest in which the kids decorate, um, a pumpkin based on their favorite book character. So last year, the character I did was Clifford, and I'll show you a picture here. <laughs> So that's my pumpkin I used for the contest to explain it to the kids. And um, over this weekend, I'm hoping to paint a new pumpkin for this year to promote it to the kids. So if you have ideas on what children's book character I should use to decorate my pumpkin as, please leave comments below. Because I really haven't decided yet and I would love for some cute ideas. Whew. So, yeah, I think that's all I have for you guys today. I'm so excited for the pumpkin sale, just fall in general, the leaves have been turning, it's getting so gorgeous out, best time of year, guys, seriously. Um, so yeah, so we're going to wrap up the stitching part, and then I'm going to move on to some books. Book time, yay! So the first book I want to show you is called Kaya and the Bees. I just read this for the kids in my school the past weekend. And in this book, um, Kaya's dad raises bees on top of their roof. But she's really, really scared of bees. But yet she wants to learn to help. So she kind of overcomes her fear. She, yeah, she does get stung at one point, but um, it's really cute and you learn a ton about bees as well. Here's the cover, or the back cover. So, highly suggest this book. It's by Meredith Boltz and illustrated by Angela Dominguez. So cute. Uh, and then I shared with the families too how to make um, honey butter for like rolls and stuff. I thought that would be really yummy too. So, Kaya and the Bees, super sweet book. Another book I've read recently to the students is Do Not Lick This Book. Um, and it's by Aiden Ben Barrick and Julian Frost. And this book is all about microbes. So in it, um, we'll learn more about microbes, why you shouldn't lick books, especially library books. And just how microbes spread. So we read this book. We talked about, we saw microbes up close. We talked about how to prevent bad microbes like the coronavirus and other things that make us sick from spreading to other people. And it was just a really interesting discussion. Plus it has really cool, this is just the front pick matter, but it has really cool super up close pictures of things. So what do you think this is? Any guesses? It's actually a green shirt. Super, super up close. Crazy, right? So, we had so much fun with this book. I highly suggest it. I'm not going to add it to the library collection, though. Because, I mean, if you have a book called Do Not Lick This Book, what are the kids going to do? They're going to lick it, and I just, no. We're not going there. Um... Another book that I just started, I got about 100 pages in, and then I ended up giving it away to a student because I knew they'd like it, is Jacqueline Woodson's new book called Before the Ever After. Um, show you a picture here. I Really, what I was attracted to was the leaves on the color cover. It's such a pretty cover. But what it's about is it's about a little boy um, and his dad, and... His dad's really starting to change and become really a different person. 
His dad was a professional football player um, back, I think, in the 80s or 90s, and got in, had got a ton of concussions playing. And now, because of um, the brain damage, really, he's starting to um, become forgetful, cranky, just his personality is really changing. Um, so it's just a really interesting book to kind of hear about that from the boy's perspective. And I would recommend it. I can't wait to finish the book. I'm so excited about it. Um, another book that's been popular with the kids lately is The One and Only Bob. So The One and Only Ivan just hit net or not Netflix, sorry, Disney Plus a few weeks ago. And um, it's about a gorilla, Ivan. And he lives in a mall along with um, an elephant. And they kind of perform in the mall. It's like a tourist, kind of, to get people to come in. Um, and it's just not a great situation for them, and they dream of leaving it. And you'll have to watch the movie. It's a great movie, too. I think it was really well done. But this version is the one and only Bob. And Bob is this cute little dog here that, um, he's a stray, and sometimes he comes and sleeps on Ivan's belly. Um, and this book is told in verse, and it's just his voice is just so funny it kind of reminds me of Hank the cow dog if you've read that he's just yeah he's all like I can't talk pretty like Ivan can I'm a street dog after all and proud of it I, he's just kind of a sassy fun little dog and this is a unique perspective on the story as well and then finally um I don't have my copy here but the frog and toad books have turned 50. It's their 50th anniversary. So yay. I've been reading those to my some of my classes as well. So still a classic. We still love it. So hope you enjoyed these books. Um, keep reading and keep stitching. Bye.